Alright, let's work a, um, a half angle problem. Um, so we want to find the exact value. Have you noticed that all these problems are find the exact value? Um, kind of a side note here, when we do half angles and double angles, this just allows uh, us to find a whole lot more angles, uh, exact values, rather than just 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, so on and so forth. Now you can find uh, half of 30, which is 15, um, and of course double 30 would be 60, but uh, you can take halves of all these angles and double all these angles, so now you're able to find a whole lot more exact values on your unit circle besides just the ones that we learned in Chapter 1. Alright, so let's um, find the exact value of the sine of 22 and a half. And before we do that, let's just examine what the identity looks like. So here's the half angle sine identity. And there's two things I want to point out to you. The first thing I want to point out to you is this plus or minus right here. Let me do this in a different color. Okay. So the identity for the half angle has a plus or minus here. If I were to square this whole thing and this whole thing. Um, of course, I would write this then as sine squared uh, x over 2. That's on your identity paper. But see, if we have a plus here and I square it, plus times plus is plus. But if I have a minus here, minus times minus is also plus. So see, the plus or minus goes away if you use um, if you use the, the squared part of the, I the identity. So you can uh, also write these on, oops, not, yeah, cosine. You can also write these on your identity paper, the squared version of that. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out to you is the whole plus or minus. The second thing I want to point out to you is this half angle business here. So let's just erase a couple things. All right, so you notice the identity is half angle. That means that this x over 2 right here, that's a half of some angle, which means that this right here, that's the, if you will, the whole angle. So if in this case x, let's make it some easy, if x was 50, then x over 2 would be 25 working the other way around, if you knew that x over 2 was, let's just say it's 20, then the whole angle would be double that. 2 times 20 would be 40. So you can kind of go either way with these things. All right, so let's work this problem right here. Let me erase some stuff. So we're given the sine of 22 and a half, and we want to find the exact value. So 22 and a half, just maybe because it has the half there, sure appears that it's a half angle. So if the half of the angle is 22 and a half degrees, then the whole angle, well that's going to be 2 times 22 and a half, which is 45 degrees. So the half angle is 22 and a half. The whole angle, if you will, is 45. So I can just substitute right in here, plus or minus, so squeeze this in, 1 minus the cosine of 45 degrees all over 2. And let me open up a new paper and work that part for you. So we've got the cosine, nope, we have, nope, back up, back up rush here. We have plus or minus the square root, there we go, of 1 minus the cosine of 45 degrees all over 2. And I will come back to this plus or minus in a minute. Let's just work the other part of it. So I'm going to ignore the plus or minus for right now. So I've got 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2 all over 2. And let's just work that down. Let's work on the numerator. 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 over 2 all over 
2. So that's 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 2, all over 2. Boy, we got a lot of 2's in here. Alright, so uh, let's, let's just take the fraction part of it for a second. So there's the numerator, and I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Well, if the denominator is 2 over 1, its reciprocal is 1 over 2. Now let's put that back under the radical. So now I've got 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. And then I can break that apart. Uh, I get the square root of the numerator all over the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I have the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 2. And we're going to deal with that plus or minus right now. But yes, you do have a radical under a radical. Yep. All right, so plus or minus. This is how you deal with the plus or minus. Okay. So um, the half angle, that's what we're finding here. We're finding the sine of the half angle. Well, the half angle is, oops, is 22 and a half. And you know 22 and a half is in quadrant 1 because that's between 0 and 90. And this is a sine. So the signs in quadrant 1 are positive. So to finish the problem here, this is going to be the plus the square root of, let me make that square root smaller, the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. So this is the plus. Now, a little word of caution before I leave this problem. Um, the half angles are going to require, uh, for each problem it's a little, a little different, but each one is going to require an analysis of what quadrant it's in in order de to determine a plus or minus. So on homework, tests, and quizzes, you have to show this analysis. So you have to um, then show how you arrived at this being plus, or if it was an example of it being minus. You would have to show that. Okay, let's do a, another problem. So let me uh, pull up a new sheet of paper, and we want to find the exact value of the cosine of 202.5 degrees. So we know that that's the half angle. So the half angle equals, like I said, 202.5. So then 2 times the half angle, well, that's 2 times 202.5, and that turns out to be 405. Not on the unit circle, but let's see. So take the 405 minus the 360, and we get 45 degrees. Sure enough, that's on my unit circle. So now I can use the cosine half angle identity, which is plus or minus square root of 1 plus the cosine of, in this case it's 45 degrees, all over 2. All right, so let's go ahead and do, um, do the radical work, and then we'll come back to the plus or minus. So 1 plus this looks just like the problem I just did, except there's a plus here. Uh, square root of 2 over 2, all over 2. So I, because I just did this problem uh, with a sign change there um, in the center, I'm just going to jump right to the conclusion that this is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2, all over 2. But remember, it's plus or minus. All right, so let's analyze the plus or minus. So 202.5 degrees is in quadrant what? Well, it's, here's 180, here's 270, so it's quadrant 3. And cosines are negative in quadrant 3, so this problem then is negative. So this is the exact value of the cosine of 202.5 degrees.